Hello, everyone. Today, we will talk about Peking Opera. The objectives for this topic are to acquaint you with Peking Opera, to discuss with you the terms and expressions concerned in the field, and to appreciate with you Peking Opera. For this topic, there will be three parts. You are going to learn some knowledge about the historical development of Peking Opera, the four major roles of Peking Opera, and the facial makeup of Peking Opera, as well as the four artistic means of Peking Opera. You will also learn how to appreciate Peking Opera. Now, let's start from the first part, the historical development of Peking Opera. As you know, many foreigners first learned Chinese culture through numerous Chinese restaurants found all over the world, and soon discern that China is a country with delicious cuisine. The second impression of Chinese culture is often Peking Opera, whose masks are symbols of China now. Peking Opera came into existence in a not too distant past, but it is full of mysteries for the Westerners. And the Peking Opera, rooted in Chinese culture, is very different from Western dramas. Many countries design posters using Peking Opera masks to symbolize year of Chinese culture. Therefore, to understand the Chinese culture, some knowledge of Peking Opera is very important. Chinese opera, together with Greek tragedy and comedy and Indian Sanskrit, are considered as the three Asian dramas in the world. Greek tragedy and comedy is, is a form of theater from ancient Greece. It reached its most significant form in the 5th century BC and heavily influenced the theater of ancient Rome and the Renaissance. Greek tragedy and comedy and Indian Sanskrit are the great pieces Greece and India have given to the world. Unfortunately, Chinese opera is only survivor of these three Asian dramas in the world. The other two have become history. So, Chinese opera is the cream of Chinese culture and even the world. Chinese operas came from the songs and the dances of the primitive society. The birth of Zha Zhu in the Yuan dynasty marked the maturity of traditional Chinese operas. During the reign of Emperor Jia Jin in Ming Dynasty, Kun Opera came into being. As one of China's representative classic operas, Kun Opera nourished and nurtured many other operas. So, it is called the mother of opera. It was during the reign of Emperor Qianlong in Qing Dynasty that Peking Opera emerged. In 1790, an Anhui troupe led by Gao Langting came to Beijing to participate in the performances to celebrate the 80th birthday of Emperor Qianlong. It was soon followed by three other troops from Anhui and became a regular event. After doing their jobs, these Anhui troops stayed in the capital and offered performances to the local public. These Anhui troops were very good at assimilating the performing characteristics of other operas, such as Kun Opera and the Qin Qiang Opera. And they were also affected by Beijing local dialect and costumes. By the time, what these Anhui troops were offering was Peking Opera, and a unique 
theatrical variety came into being. Peking opera, which has developed from rural shows, has a wide range audience. They included not only members of the royal family, the high-ranking official and scholars, and also merchants, townspeople, and handicraftsmen. So gradually, Peking opera became a townspeople-oriented performing art. After 1860, Peking opera quickly spread. All over the country. In 1867, Peking Opera spread to Shanghai. At the time, a group of famous Peking Opera actors went south, bringing Peking Opera to Shanghai and making Shanghai the other center of Peking Opera in addition to Beijing. In Shanghai, Peking Opera developed gradually some unique characteristics, leading later to the division of Beijing School and the Shanghai School. In 1919, Mei Lanfang, a very famous Peking Opera actor, enjoying high reputation then and even now, went to Japan to stage performances. Peking opera troops have since frequently staged performances in foreign countries, and the rest of the world regarded the Peking opera as the representative of the traditional Chinese operas. Now, Peking opera is the most popular and influential opera in China with a history of about 200 years. Flow of Chinese cultural facts, Peking Opera presents the audience with an encyclopedia full of attractive stories, beautiful paintings and costumes, and graceful gestures and martial arts. Up till now, you have learned about the historical development of Peking Opera. Then, how about major roles in Peking Opera? We will learn in the next part. Thank you for your attention.